Stay tuned. Band in Seattle starts right now. Hi, welcome to Band in Seattle. I'm Xander, your host. Band in Seattle features up-and-coming bands from all over, hoping for their break on the national stage. Tonight we have two great bands, Cracker Factory and Something in the Trees, here in our studio, ready to share their music and their stories. We'll be right back with the Gonzo Rock Trio of Cracker Factory. You can't pretend that you're saying that it's all inside your brains And wonder why won't they just let you be You can stand on the side, let the idiots decide Who is right and who just needs some sleep just recall what you were told when you were young Cause now you're old without your glasses You can barely see So put them out and take a good hard look In the mirror, the truth is getting nearer I wouldn't help you if they offered To set me up to heaven for free A lot of the times I just describe this song as being mean and dumb My name is R.L. Heyer I play guitar and sing in Cracker Factory, and I work construction. The name Cracker Factory, it's mainly a Simpsons reference, referencing Millhouse's dad who worked at the Cracker Factory. Before I moved to Seattle, I was in a band called Fat Farm with PHs. That band kind of fizzled out after a brief cruise ship stint. I came back to Seattle and started a band called Otis P and the Jive Funk. We were, we were in the middle of an album, and we were going to call the album the Cracker Factory, and the band broke up before we were done. And so Shane Denali and I were like, well, let's start a new band. And so we called it Cracker Factory. No two notes, and these are them. I sing them over and over again. I know two notes, and no like this one. Two Notes is kind of a, a funny, funny song. <laughs> Obviously, there are only two notes in it. We used to rehearse at a rehearsal studio where the walls were not necessarily very soundproof. And the band next to us were, I kind of got stuck on this one riff. It only had two notes in it, and all of a sudden, RL started singing, I know two notes, and these are them. I know two notes. And these are them I sing them over and over again I know two notes They go like this Front. I'm, I'm more about being the foundation and laying down the groove, being down the, being the foundation of the harmony. That's, that's more, I'll let, you know, the guys that have the, the chops and the flash and those guys can be in the forefront and I'll just be in the back laying it down for them. Relationships, hobbies, serious hobbies, you know, all that stuff has never really, uh, taken over for music. Hopefully my girlfriend doesn't see this. <laughs> Gypsy Grifter, and it just starts off with this kind of um, like late Miles, later Miles Davis kind of groove to it. Um, but it's also very Hendrixy, which is why I wanted to call it Gypsy Grifter. I knew I wanted to call it Gypsy something, but Gypsy Grifter just stuck. So 
So ever since I was in high school, I, my dream was to just leave Cheney and come to Seattle and be a street musician. So that didn't quite happen, luckily, and I love it here. The, the weather, yeah, people say it rains all the time, but it just makes the sunshine that much happier when it comes out. Dan in Seattle will be right back with more of Cracker Factory. Exact words can I define what's keeping me from you? If you could only understand how oh, everything's confused while we drift along the way of insanity. It seemed like it was here, there's no way to relate. What I feel when you're lying next to me That only you and I will be left standing in this world as it withers away When I was about eight, I discovered my mom's electric guitar. Part of what drew me to it is I thought I wasn't supposed to be playing it. So I just started playing it and, and then my parents came over and they're like, Oh, do you want to play that? And I was like, yeah. It's an electric guitar. I really like all of RL's music. And he's totally self-taught. You know, you put that together with really great music and, you know, it's something I want to be a part of, I'm on board with. I wish that I was more even tempered But maybe that would make me less in tune When stretched so far from where I should be Tempered, oddly enough, I wrote on my honeymoon. I had lost my temper about some silly thing in, in Mexico, and I just, my, my wife went to, to the spa or something, and I wrote a song. Or even tempered. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, I promised myself that I was not gonna work 40 hours because I wanted to do music. Uh, a friend of a friend was, he's a, owns a landscape business and uh, referred me, so I was looking for something new. and So I, I tried it out and I ended up working for him for about seven years. And here I am, I've, I've got clients all over the city. I got them from Shoreline down to Des Moines. So I make a decent wage per hour, which allows me to uh, not work an eight hour day. I thought I was gonna do it for about three weeks, but they, they liked me so much that they kept me on. Now I'm, now I'm working full time here. It's been pretty hard to balance it, but you know, I've, I've been able to do a pretty good job so far. Next to no reflection in the absence of light. can't be picky about, about what you do if you're going to do this for a living. So you have to, to really be opportunistic, you have to take opportunities as they come. You can't be too picky, you can't have too big of an ego. If you're going to be a musician, you have to be a musician. And the, more, the more I play with Cracker Factory, the more, the more bands we play with, um, the more I see it. But there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talent in this town. There are a lot of guitar players. <laughs>
You know, that's the old, I uh, can't swing a dead cat without hitting a guitar player in this town. It's true, but there are a lot of good ones too. Next up on Band in Seattle is the original rock music of Something in the Trees. Stay tuned. Larry and Matt and I all worked at the EMP together. That's where we met. Larry and I were big fans of Matt's. He was the best bass player we knew, and we were constantly trying to get him to play music with us. I didn't initially think that I could sing, uh, but Larry sort of talked me into it because he didn't want to. If there was a documentary done about our band, I think uh, Sweets and Oils would be the song that would start that documentary. I started playing when I was 18 and really only thought I would be a bedroom player. I had no ambitions to be in a band because I'm not the kind of person who likes being on stage. But I actually started working at Experience Music Project and I met Josh there. After meeting him, I wanted to play music in a band, with him mainly. And then I met Matt and then eventually the stars all aligned and we got together and formed this band and I couldn't be happier. Number one, I overcame my fear. And number two, I get to play music with some of the best musicians I've ever met. I'm digging for the beat up for Looking for your father's tools And they will saw themselves in half Just to circumvent the rules And now we're going to praise your Lord I'm Matt Hopper, and I play bass for Something in the Trees. Summer Camp Garbage, I want to say that was maybe our first song um, that, that Adam um, and Josh had basically written most of it before we even came, uh, came together. I thought that was a pretty snappy title. Uh, all of my summer camp experiences as a kid were terrible, uh, to the point where there's probably permanent psychic damage. One of the first times we were kind of hanging out and um, I think we were practicing taking a break and just hanging out. We were kind of reflecting on the, the fact that none of us grew up here, but we all really, really loved this place and we were drawn to it for, for various reasons. Somebody said something about must be something in the trees, you know, just being drawn to the, the beauty of the Pacific Northwest, the mountains, the trees, the water, and we're all just kind of like, that'd be a pretty good band name. I definitely think something in the trees is, is pretty unique. Um, I know a lot of people like to say things like that about their music, but it's very collaborative. I'm classically trained and, and I play a lot of jazz. A lot of the other guys come from kind of a rock background and we definitely draw those influences together to I think create something pretty unique. And you know I'm not it's hard for me 
to describe exactly what it is that we do or what kind of band we are, so I typically say we're a rock band that kind of does psychedelic stuff. Yeah, Walls 33 is one of the most beautiful songs I think that we play, and it kind of puts at least me in a trance when we play it. And I notice myself watching the other guys in the band a lot when we play that song, just because I kind of like watching them and hearing what they're doing. Band in Seattle will be right back with more of Something in the Trees. So Sawteeth, uh, this is probably one of my favorite songs. I love playing in octaves and using them as riffs, and this, the whole song is based on just one kind of repetitive octave riff. Sixth grade, I got a guitar, an acoustic guitar, like the miniature one for Christmas, and uh, started taking lessons right away. And it was just something that, it was like, I made the transition from sports to music really quickly. I really didn't play an instrument until I was 18, but I remember just loving music throughout. So finally when I was 18, I decided I was gonna try and play an instrument. And so my dad bought me this one. Still have it, it's still my only acoustic instrument. Um, and now I use it in my classroom, and I let my students sign it. I've always been musically obsessed. I, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of friends as a kid, so I, my friends were records. And so I would just listen to records all night after school and obsess about music, and uh, that never ended. I actually went and, and, and to go enroll my, my natural resources classes, and I ended up just walking right past that building and went to the music building and ended up in a conversation with the dean and the next thing I know I'm taking ear training tests and, and, and doing all sorts of stuff to enroll in music school. Shame on us for going gray, we did the job but never got paid. Denim jeans and Faberge, a purity smells like aftershave. In fact, I think one of the things kind of interesting about our music is that all of the music has been written before any of the, the lyrics or, or melodies. So we always, basically, we come with ideas to Josh, and then he comes up with these wonderful, beautiful melodies and phrasing. Now you're sitting on my cloud. Bring it out, bring it dry. Restaurant jobs are the best place for musicians to work because you don't have to really focus too much about your job outside of it. It's a hustle. I'm hustling for work. I'm, I'm making time to play music, and um, but it's all worth it because you know I feel like my kids know me and I know them. Being a teacher, being a dad, and being in a band, it's a lot going on. But I feel like. The music, playing the music, is what balances everything out. I used to call it it's something I wanted to do. I feel like now it's something I almost need to do to feel balanced.
Something that I experienced when I first moved here was just the sense of possibility with music. Um, where I came from, it was a very small and insular music uh, scene, and it was sort of an us for no more mentality. And here there was just so much possibility. You, it was possible to start a band with your friends and play a show you know, a month after starting your band. Uh, you know, that's not something that happens everywhere. Thanks for watching Band in Seattle. To see all of the concerts held in our studios, go to our webpage, bandinseattle.com. Next week, we return with Van Epps and Mountains and Tunnels with more great music and great stories on Band in Seattle.